Welcome back to Once a Star. Next, Floyd Patterson, a man who held what many people believe to be the greatest individual title you can have, heavyweight champion of the world. Like many fighters, he grew up in the mean streets of a big city, in his case, Brooklyn. He was the youngest of 11 children and spent some time in reform school as a kid. But thanks to his talent and his legendary manager, Customato, he became something special and earned the respect of the entire world. He was the first heavyweight to regain the title and he held the crown for a total of five years. In 1956, he fought Archie Moore for the heavyweight title that had been vacant since the retirement of Rocky Marciano. In the fifth round, a left hook sent Moore to the canvas and made 21-year-old Floyd Patterson the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Floyd talked about what it's like to have the drive to become a champion. I can remember sometimes I would be sleeping at night. I wake up at maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom. Now I think about the combination, you know, and I think about it and before, and we used to have the cord, you know, the string you pull for the lights to go on. And I used to be in the bathroom throwing punches at the string. And sometimes you get carried away and all fighters make noise, you know. My noise is <coughs> and it got louder and louder. <coughs> and then after a while, my father would come to the bathroom and say, what the hell are you doing in the bathroom at 2 o'clock in the morning? Go to bed. And I would run and get in the bed. I would tell him, I'm just shallow boxing. Anytime you love something as much as I do, or a Sugar Ray Leonard or a Sugar Ray Robinson or um, uh, Archie Moore, Walcott, guys like that, you will take it above and beyond what it really is. You see, money was important. I'm very happy that there was money in boxing, but I would have boxed without the money. In my opinion, every fighter that takes it above and beyond and that really puts a lot into it has a special kind of a, a special kind of a spark within, see? And that spark stays bright a long time. Patterson fought two highly publicized bouts with Ingemar Johansson. In the first, the Swede took away Patterson's title. I said to myself, I'm going to prove to him. I said, I will probably lose the second fight. I didn't go in overconfident like I'm going to knock this guy out. All I can only guarantee was that when I go into the second fight, after I get knocked out or after I lose or whatever, he's going to have difficulty raising his hand in victory. That was the only thing I can guarantee. And the process of doing so, I knocked him out. You know, in all actuality, Boxing is sort of a revenge sport. But revenge right then and there, not tomorrow or the next day, right then and there. You hit me. It may take me around the two, but I'm going to get you back. Most of the times, I'll come right, right back and try to get you then. But then sometimes I'll bide my time. I'll wait for the prop opening, and I'll try to drop more bombs than what you dropped on me. See, so it's sort of a revengeful type thing. It's all based around that spark we were talking about earlier. And of course, sometimes fighters are put on a certain pedestal that they try to live up to. Uh, fighters, you get the impression, macho, uh, strong, and all that sort of stuff, which is, in my opinion, bull crap. You know, macho inside the ring, but outside the ring, they're just like you and I. You know, we're no different. In other words, I used to go to Coney Island quite a bit. I enjoyed myself immensely there. But many times I would go after I won the Olympics and started fighting pro and I was on television quite a bit, people would actually follow me. Uh, when I go in the restaurant, I go to bite something, I see half a dozen people looking at me, so I put it back on the plate. You know? So after a while, I said, forget about this, you know? So every now and then I put a mustache and beard on or something, you know, to sort of disguise myself because I wanted to be with you. You know, and to be with people, to laugh and talk and enjoy everything with them, uh, I didn't like being special. Patterson lost the title to Sonny Liston in 62, but he kept fighting until something else replaced boxing in his life. My spark died when I married my second wife. Okay. Uh, there was a greater love for her than boxing. I had a first wife, too. Uh, but somehow, boxing was the number one thing, nothing ever surpassed that. I finally found something that surpassed boxing. When I married my second wife, uh, then I realized that something was gone. I, can, I realized it in the gymnasium. 
as the years went on and on and on, and it wasn't until near the end that I realized what was gone. I accepted it, and uh, I didn't fight anymore. Patterson and his wife Janet now live comfortably in upstate New York. He has a gym set up in his barn where he trains young fighters, in particular his adopted son Tracy. Tracy was an 11 year old troubled kid when Patterson first met him, but Floyd recognized the same spark of a fighter in Tracy that he once had himself. Floyd legally adopted Tracy in 1981, and now at age 20, Tracy is an up and coming junior lightweight. Good luck, Floyd. Thank you. All right. Do the best you can, okay? That's all. I saw more of myself in him than in myself. I believe in that. Uh, it's a lot different when it involves someone else. When I get hit, I know how it feels. I can deal with it. Or sometimes I can't, not too good. But I do know me. Uh, but my son Tracy, when he gets hit, I don't know what goes through his mind. I don't know how hurt he is. And all those things bother me. How you feeling, man? How you feel? You got adrenaline on that? Should have put adrenaline on it. What's the matter? What's the matter? Hey, it went up his nose. How you feel? OK, you all right? Yeah. OK, take deep breath, let it out easy. There ain't been people working on this thing still. Tracy, you're open for right hands. He's trying to get you with a right hand. He's got a pretty good right hand. I saw for you doing very well. Just keep on boxing. You see, what I'm trying to do is put everything that I have in him and more. Now, what's good for me may not be good for him, but the know-how. In other words, I will give him the know-how. He can do it his way. It's the same thing. You see what I mean? I've always liked to be a part of people. And when you have done something special, or you're an actor or an actress or whatever, or you're somebody, it's very difficult to be a part of society because everybody looks at you. I prefer being with the people looking at somebody else. <laughs> 